I'm CK. And yes, that title was correct. Tonight, we're going to start building our own mobile phone. I saw this, I was browsing on eBay, and I saw a number of resellers, probably 20, that were selling the same package. Uh, a mobile phone that you can put together yourself. And I'll leave a link in the description, however, these sellers come and go. Uh, you can probably just search for this kit text and, and find it. So we're going to dive into it, see what's up, and see if we end up with a mobile phone we can use. Hope you enjoy it. So here's the box from Circuit Mess. Ringo, build your own mobile phone. Uh, one thing that's interesting, uh, it's got an age rating here of 11 plus. So, obviously they think this is good for youngsters, uh, beginners, and I'll be evaluating it that way. On the side it says, hold on, i got to put my visor on. On the side it says, manufactured by Circuit Mess DOO, Croatia, and it's got a contact email address. On the back, Circuit Mess Ringo. Let me get an X-Acto knife out and start cutting her open. You can do it. Good message. It's just like Hitchhiker's Guide. Don't panic. You can do it. And it's got a URL to the build. Now, this is nice. As you can see, it's all laid out case, main circuit board, the brain board and micro SD card, bags with tiny electronic components, 128 by 160 TFT, dis TFT display board, network module, sound board, joystick, micro SD reader, and micro USB cable. So this is all laid out for uh, someone with not a lot of experience, which is really great. So I'm going to pop the covers one by one and we'll take a look. I'll try not to mess things up too badly. There's the case, number matrix, other controls I'm sure. Here's the TFT display board which is already okay on the circuit board. There are a couple of things. Uh, there are a number of SMD resistor, surface mount resistors. There's, I think that's an LED. I think that's a multi, uh, I think that's a three component LED. There's a microcontroller there. Couple more surface mount. There's a big old inductor. Uh, a big old conde uh, connector. There's a bunch of surface mount components already on the board. So that's inter. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not the. That's not the display. That's the battery. Uh, it's a very, very thin battery. I'm not. I don't think I'm going to get all day life out of this. And then on. That's the solder side. On the other side, we've got the brain board goes here, SD card slot is here, USB slot here, sound board slot here, numeric sw key switches, two-way joystick, some other control buttons, the LCD display goes there, and the speaker goes there. Uh, microphone goes here, and there's a little cutoff that says headphone. So I bet the soundboard contains a headphone jack. So, so far this is looking pretty cool. Then we've got a little, the back plate, and a little thing that just kind of is flopping around. And I'm a little worried, because this looks like an SMD component came loose from the board, and that's not good.
because I don't have an oven to reflow anything back on there and these leads are very short and I think I think it came from right here I may be able to get this back on there I'm um, uh, the brain board micro SD card so that's all populated TFT display the network adapter module, soundboard, looks like we'll be doing some soldering there, joystick, little thumb, thumb joystick, and then the bag with many components. So we've got buttons, got various other little componentry there, more little componentry edge connectors, other switches, then some hardware to screw everything together. I need to go to this build URL and see if they have a photograph of the board. Oh, they've got a couple of kits. They've got a portable gaming console, another gaming console, a voice assistant, Spencer, that would be interesting. Uh, JD, I don't know what that is, Ringo, which is the phone we're working on, and Wilson, a little uh, remote control car. So let's take a look at Ringo. They estimate this at five hours for the build. And they've got a PDF of it, uh, or you can go through The chapters here. Uh, let's see. Estimated age group is 11 plus, as I said. Useful skills, basic soldering experience, parentheses, just a bit of practice beforehand. Ability to recognize basic components. What you'll learn, how to solder, name basic components, how to connect electric comp components and why, uh, what microcontrollers are and some basics of digital electronics. So this is all pretty cool. Again, it's uh, except for the fact that this board seems to have a component loose and that's what I'm looking at now. Huh, well that's interesting. I think you can see this. So where I thought this component would go, which would be here, if you look here on the picture, there's this resistor, this LED, this little six pin, this controller up here with a, oops, this controller up here with a couple of capacitors next to it, this mounting hole, and this pad, which is where I thought that thing dropped off from doesn't even show on that diagram. So I don't know what that means. I'm going to keep looking. Okay, I'm going to pause the cameras a little bit and I'm going to dive into this because I really got to figure out uh, where that chip or where that component came from and where it may go. So I got in touch with the folks at uh, Circuit Mess and they replied very quickly uh, confirming that this capacitor does in fact go on this pad. Uh, none of their uh, pictures on their website actually show this pad or cap but uh, they sent me an updated picture and uh, so I can get the orientation right even though it was pretty straightforward I just needed confirmation. Uh, it took 24 hours to get confirmation, that's good instead of just bowling ahead. I'll do something that we haven't done on camera before. I'm going to uh, be using some silver conductive epoxy. A couple of things to go along with it. Obviously, conductive uh, glue is a good thing to have. Uh, if you don't heat cure it, it has a slightly higher 
uh, resistance like the hand can have a little capacitance, but I don't think I care about it in this case. But so we'll be mixing that on this little metal pad with a popsicle stick I trimmed down. Now another thing we're going to be using is this, and this is a glue dropper hook. It's designed uh, to work with Serrano, uh, super glue, crazy glue. Uh, it captures a drop in that little loop and you can precisely place it where you want. Uh, the product name is the Glue Looper from Creative Dynamics LLC. Uh, it fits in most, most uh, hobby knife handles. I use Exacto, of course. Uh, I got this from uh, stumac.com. Good place to buy tools. So we'll be using one looper and this uh, solder paste has, it's got a 20 minute working time which is really nice so you don't have to rush once you mix it. You've got roughly 20 minutes to apply it and then apply the part on top of it and then there's a 65 minute uh, cure time. Uh, so that means this is all I'm going to be doing tonight, but I thought you might want to watch this. So let me get this these open. And of course this is way more than I would need, but it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to save on this. Mix it all up with a popsicle stick that I whittled down to a point to be able to mush it all around. That's, that's mixed well enough. Now, uh, let me zoom in on the side camera because you're not going to want to watch this from the top because all you'll see is the top of my head. Okay, so let's get my dropper. Pick up, and that's too much. Pick up some and put it on the pad. Put a little more on this pad, and then on the other pad. And a little bit more on that pad. Oops, that's way too much. So, tweezers and dropping it down. And I believe we're I think that is secure, and that's it for this evening because this has got a cure. Uh, it's a it's a risk doing this, and I may in the end uh, have to go back to them and say, "Hey, could you please send me a new motherboard?" They offered that, by the way. Uh, I said no. I'll go ahead and try and repair this one. So we'll see what happens. So that's it for this evening. All right. So we've put the cap on the board with the conductive epoxy. Now I'm not certain, unfortunately I can't really test to see if uh, I've got good electrical contact. I think I do. 
Uh, so we'll just have to see. Uh, one thing we'll do just for fun, make sure this is in the frame and move the board away for a second. So, so you can see and also because it's a limitation that you need to be aware of with uh, conductive glues is they're not as good as copper wire or something that is got very little resistance but if you look uh, here on the glue that's still left on the stirring popsicle stick it comes out to about 2.8 2.7 ohms of resistance across the thermal, uh, I mean, conductive epoxy itself. So you are adding a little bit of resistance by using this. Uh, the closer you get, as you can see, as I bring the leads closer together, it drops. So if they're right next to each other, uh, kind of simulating being on the board, uh, that's like one ohm of resistance. Uh, we're looking at the guide. And we're going to begin with the brain board. So the brain board is here. And the brain board is held tightly in with the foam. I'm not sure. I'm not, there we go. Okay, so there's the brain board. Expressive ESP32. W room dash 32. It's got a whole bunch of certifications and so on, uh, and a little SIM card or SD card in it. Uh, but before we do anything with the uh, brain board itself, we have to get the headers for it. And here are a bunch of headers in this component bag. So I, that means I'm going to have to dump, open this component bag and dump it out into something. Yeah, I'm not sure I like uh, the organization quite. I mean, the, again, I'm they're, they're offering this uh, as it says on the front, to ages 11 and up. So I know as an 11 year old, I would want a little more guidance. It just, the soldering the components, it just says, let's begin with the brain board. Take two sticks of pin headers and cut them to, now, if I'm trying to follow directly and it says, we're going to start with the brain board. I'm going to go to the little pocket here and pull out the brain board. Now I have to grab some pin headers, but it doesn't tell you where those would be. And again, I'm being real picky here, but this says bags with tiny electronics components. A pin header is not necessarily going to be thought of as a tiny electronic component. I'm just, I'm sorry, this is not that. So, if I were writing this guide myself, I'd say I take two uh, sticks of pin headers that you get from the, one of the bags in the bags with tiny electronics components pocket. Something like that. Just be real specific for people. Uh, particularly, again, if you're 11 and you're just exploring and you don't know to dive into something, you don't want to mess up. I think that's a big thing. You don't want to mess up. So uh, we're going to cut them to fit the board.
Now we're going to mount it to the board and we need a bolt and a spacer. So I'm going to complain again because that's just who I am. Uh, this says bags with tiny electronic components. Bolts, nuts, and spacers are not tiny electronic components. Uh, call it something different, bags with tiny components or something, but if you say electronic components and you're telling me to go look for a uh, nut, a spacer, and a bolt, then I won't look in a bag that says electronic components. I don't think I'm being too unreasonable there. Okay, so that's got the nuts and spacers, but it does not have the bolts. So I guess that's in another bag. Oh uh, yeah, so the bolts are in even a different bag. And I'm going to combine these two bags because they make logical sense to go together. Lots of good pictures here about what to do. You take all the nylon bolts seem to be the same, which is good. And we'll grab our Heath kit screwdriver. And screw through there. And then one of the spacers, and it says there are two similar types of brass spacers, and you want the bigger one. So, yeah, again, I'm not quite sure if you can see this. Let me get it arranged a little bit better. Two different size spacers. As you can see here, this is an uh, eighth of an inch, shorter than the other, three, three millimeters, something like that. But, bottom line is, we take the longer one and thread it on here. And there are real clear pictures here about uh, where everything should go and how it should look uh, when you're done, which I think is really great. Now, We install the brain board, as you can see. The brain board, install the brain board here and the SD card. Uh, so you can see, again, this is well done. On your brain board, you've got your reset switch, on switch, SD card, USB connection. And here on where you're going to put it, it says on switch reset SD card USB. So the, you're not going to have anxiety about whether I'm putting it on the right way. Is it going in the right? Am I uh, messing up? No, it just drops right in. Now we'll take one of the plastic nuts and put it on here. It's not a good way to tighten this, so I'll just use some needle nose. Of course, I'm using needle nose right next to the capacitor. I glued back, epoxied back to the board, so I got to make sure I don't slip and screw that up and knock it off again. But you don't have to make this screw all that tight. Uh, since you're going to be soldering all the pins together, so you're relying much more on the ma mechanical strength of the solder joints than that one dinky little uh, 
nylon nut. So go ahead and solder these. Okay, I'm going to pause just for half a second here as I'm soldering these pins in. Uh, this LED just lit up. That's interesting. So this battery must have some charge in it and the connection I just made there uh, is connected, is sending power to that LED or the sub-circuit that uh, that LED is an indicator for. That's interesting and I wonder if it says anything about that. Uh, nope. Again, I think it might be worthwhile to say, uh, by the way, when you solder some of these connections, you're going to get some lights coming on. Because it's a little bit freaky. Or perhaps they don't expect the battery to be plugged in. That's probably more like it. Uh, in fact, I don't think they do. So uh, I'm going to pull the battery because that's a little freaky. But I would not have shipped it with the battery in and charged. There. That little light went out. But yeah, I don't think they should ship it with the battery connected. That's a little freaky. Okay, so the brain board is soldered on. Okay, next we're going to do uh, the display board. So we need another header. Now we're going to bolt it to the board. And basically the same drill as the brain board, so I'll zip through that. Then we're going to mount it. Now it's interesting that they chose to have two bolts on the header pin side and only one bolt on the uh, free side, which is kind of, in my opinion, backwards because you're getting mechanical support here uh, from the pin headers, so you don't necessarily need both bolts for that mechanical support where on this side You've got mechanical support on only one corner, and this is kind of a little flexible, so I would have done it differently if I were doing the mechanical design on this. Okay, so now we're going to do the soundboard next. We're going to do headers, a microphone, and a headphone jack on this. So, let's see where that is. Here's the soundboard. Need one pin header, one microphone, one headphone jack. So, let's see if we can find those things. There's the headphone jack. And now we're just looking for the microphone. That's a speaker. Oh, here it is. So, headphone jack, microphone, soundboard.
there we go. Now, one, uh, I haven't introduced this in this video, and if you're wondering, this uh, is a silicon rubber soldering aid from Austin Ribbon Mics. That's triple W. AustinMikes.com. Uh, it's just real handy for stabilizing things. It's nice soft silicone. Uh, the soldering iron won't burn it. Uh, and it's got lots of cutouts for all kinds of things. Put a circuit board in there, put wires in there to hold them together to splice, put anything you want in there. It's just, it's a real handy little uh, holder if you don't want to use a pan of ice or uh, a PCB holder, so I find it very handy, and I'll put a link in the description. And now we're going to mount the soundboard pretty much the same way we've mounted everything else. Okay, now we're going to put buttons on. And there are two types of buttons. There are big buttons, which I assume are going to be function type stuff. And then there's a bunch of small buttons for uh, dialing numbers and so on. And you notice I cut off the camera to, when I soldered all the screws, uh, switches on the board because nobody needs to watch that. Now one thing you might have noticed as I was putting the switches in, even in fast speed, uh, these switches up against the uh, brain board, it's a little bit of a pain to get them in because uh, there's you're going below uh, the plane of the brain board itself. So if you're working with a young builder on this, uh, coach them through that, encourage them uh, to be careful putting those switches in place. Next, we're going to put the joystick in, and i got to get the box out again for that. And little analog joystick in its own little hole. Take that out. Oh, and by the way, uh, just like there was an extra big uh, push switch, there are one, two, three, four, five extra uh, keypad switches, so if uh, someone makes a mistake, it's not disastrous. Which is, of course, a thoughtful addition to the kit. Hmm. A couple of these pins are a little bent. Could have gotten bent when I just had to pull them out of the foam. Not too mu not too hard. Again, for uh, a young builder, the main issue will be to not bridge, in my opinion. The main issue will be to not bridge the uh, connector pins uh, that you have to put on the brain board and the soundboard. The rest of it is pretty straightforward. Soldering. And the network board is right here. And again, this foam is really, it's good stuff, but it grabs things pretty tightly. It 
So a standard network board and antenna. So we're going to need the board and two of the white nylon nuts and bolts. And I see those. Good. So the network module goes Network module goes here. Can't be much clearer than that. And of course, if you've ever seen these in other phones or in a uh, Wi-Fi hotspot or something, the edge connector is keyed so you can't put it in incorrectly. I'm sorry. So it would be extremely difficult to put it in incorrectly. Obviously, you can put it in incorrectly because I have seen people perform amazing mechanical feats to get something wrong. And of course this has got, this is an official legit uh, network board with its own IM, uh, EI and FCC ID and all that so you're not getting some uh, pirate knockoff thing. And I just dropped solder on the, my solder on the floor but then I realized uh, we're not going to solder anymore, so it doesn't matter. Put that one screw in there. Interesting that they switched from, oops, from uh, black nylon to white nylon for these screws. Must have been I don't know. I can't even speculate on why they would have done that. I assume we're going to stick this uh, antenna to the back plate of the case when we get to putting the case together because it's got uh, sticky on the back. Now we take the speaker and the speaker looks a little different than the speaker in the picture in the book which is interesting because the one in the build guide is completely round and this is oval and the space is oval so I'm not quite sure why they made it round in the build guide. And the speaker connector is right here. Clearly labeled as speaker. Now, it's got a pull tab here. I don't know if that's really a pull tab. Yeah, it's really a pull tab. Oh, it's for... huh. That's got adhesive behind it, and I don't know where that's going to go, because the directions just say, put the speaker in so it's snug between the board and the display board. That's kind of... Like there's nothing, there's nothing holding it in place. And with the wires pulling on it a little bit, I might have come up with a better way to do that. But we'll see later on. And that's it. That's the assembly of uh, the motherboard for the phone. Uh, so I'm going to pause for this evening with that and we'll pick it up again uh, tomorrow with putting the case together, the button caps, and all that. Alright, so we're all done with the soldering. Now uh, it's time to do the mechanical assembly. And the first step is putting the buttons on. Okay, so this is A. Oops, and I put it on wrong. A 
and you know the drill. I'll speed up uh, the installation of all the number buttons. Of course, one thing I'm going to do is bring up my phone dialer so I get the numbers right. Because it's always driven me kind of crazy that calculators and phones are opposite in how the numbers go. Never understood that. Okay, now we've got the four function buttons which take power, home, dash, and dash. And the picture in the guide does not show you which one goes where. So let me go to the next page and see if... Nope. Next page. Okay, finally a picture. Oh, that's interesting because I would not have thought of that. This is dash, this is power, this is home, and this is dash. I really think they should have put this, that picture, uh, on the page where you're putting the button caps on instead of having to go search through elsewhere to find it. So we've got case pieces left. It's plugged in. Now I'm going to press the power button. And there we go. I think you can see that. Circuit mess Ringo loading. I'm focusing the other camera, so... Okay, it says charge for at least an hour. Press A to continue, but I'm not going to wait. Let's test the buttons. Oh, good. Press every button, and they turn green as you press them. On the display, that's nice. So you're just validating that every button works. Button's okay. Let's test the joystick. This is a nice joystick, by the way. I like this. I wish I had this on my Xbox, con Xbox controller. Oop, speaker's working. Yes, uh, press A to confirm. Yes. Network module is okay. Signal is okay. Uh, SIM card not found. That's okay. We're not going to do that. Uh, we'll skip that for right now. Uh, now, retry skip. I assume if I move the joystick, it'll go to skip. Yes, it will. Okay. Uh, SD card okay. Let's look at the RGB LEDs on the back. Okay. Oh, I didn't know it had RGB LEDs on the back. Those were those three color RGBs I pointed out a uh, long, long time ago at the beginning of the build. Did every LED work correctly? I don't know, because I 
started the test before I knew they were there. So we'll retry that one. Reds, good. Greens, good. And blues, good. Okay, so all the LEDs work fine. And now we're going to do the time. Uh, I'm going to see what Force Time Sync does. No, Sam couldn't fetch time. Okay. So I guess this doesn't have Wi Fi. Uh, I didn't know that. So we're just going to confirm. And the setup wizard's done, the time is not set right. Now we hold the pound sign to unlock. And now we've got phone, we've got an address, contacts, got messages, got a clock, got media, and got settings, calculator, flashlight, calendar, snake, pong, invaders, and space rocks. Let's play sp snake because if you're a programmer, you've probably written a snake game. I wrote one long time ago. Did pretty well with it because I added some interesting stuff to it. But let's see. Loading now. Still loading. Still loading. Still loading. Still loading. I think it just rebooted itself. Oh, no. Snake was loading up. It just took a long time to load. Wall. Speed. Scores. Exit. But how do I start? There we go. Oops. What the hey? Yep, it's moving around like Snake does. I gotta go down and get the... And the LEDs on the back, as you may be able to tell, are flashing. Oops! I just have to... I gotta score three. I'm doing really well. So let's exit out of this. So except for being able to test the phone connectivity, which really uh, I'm sure it'll work. Everything else has worked very successfully. Uh, so I'm not going to wait uh, to post that. Uh, we'll just go with this. Again, it's a good kit. Uh, while it says for 11 up, I really do recommend for some of the steps along the way that you uh, coach your youngster as they're going through this because there's some areas that could be frustrating or confusing, particularly again uh, the final assembly of the board. Uh, nothing too too terribly bad except again I'm still looking at this speaker and it's still kind of floating around loose in here. Uh, I wish they had come up with a way, I mean it kind of is being squished between the top of the case and the motherboard but I wish they had come up with a better way to do that. Uh, simply a adhesive pad or uh, double stick tape on the back of the speaker would have been enough. But uh, it's a good kit. I think a youngster will learn some good skills from, from it and they'll end up with a functional thing. I mean obviously it's not something they're going to uh, want to use for business but as a starter phone and little program running thing it's okay. Thanks for watching.